<laughs> uh, let's talk about what J.P. Morgan is doing. Very offensive what they're doing over there. So here we go. Uh, graduates should expect to work 12-hour days, six days a week, to really master their job, says J.P. Morgan executive, a business insider story. Graduate wealth management analysts should expect to work 72 hours a week and they'll be better trained for it, according to Mary Callahan Erdos, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase's asset and wealth management division, based on the idea that it takes roughly 10,000 hours to gain base-level mastery of something that's going to take around five years if somebody works 8-hour 80 hour, eight hour days, five days a week, she said. On Wall Street, it takes... It's more like 12-hour days, six days a week. That cuts you down to about two and a half years before you master it something. And tw- I love the fact that they're just open about it. In 2013, an intern of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch's London office, died of a seizure. While it was conclusive, an inquest concluded that overwork could have contributed to 21-year-old Moritz Erdhardt, uh, his death. Unfortunate story, obviously, there. But the fact that the CEO is openly saying, if you want to make it, it's... 12-hour days, six days a week to cut down the uh, mastering the skill set in half the time, two and a half years. Adam, your thoughts on this? I'm totally okay with this as long as it's full disclosure before you get the job. Think about who's taking these jobs. Very uh, established. You know, you, you, you think did, somebody's you, taking this job not knowing those are the hours? No, that's what I'm saying. They know this. Yeah, it's, of course. It's known up Don't front. take the job. Exactly. Yeah. Look, why are you taking this job? Because you, you want to make money. Because you want to make money. Yeah, it's a tough and job. So if you're saying that it typically takes five years to do this, now you can do this in two and a half years. You graduate, you're 22, you're 23. By the time you're 25, you put in the crazy hours. You're 25, you've made money, you're, you're an expert. I believe it was Malcolm Gladwell that says you need to put in 10,000 hours. Um, to be an expert at something and if you can do it in, in half the time and by the time you're 25 you're an established expert in a field by the time you're 30 you'll have multi-millions in the bank i think a lot of people would want to do this yes you're sacrificing your early 20s and yes there's burnout and burnout is real but you know what you're getting yourself into if that's a job you're taking i call bullshit i, I think it's nonsense that you're going to take your lowest wage employees grind them into dust whoever makes it makes it whoever doesn't wasn't worth it you know meanwhile jamie diamond's getting another freaking billion dollars or whatever they're giving him but you these know, aren't their lowest wage employees these are right employees. out of college these are the lowest wage people right these are these people fresh out of college six figures, now, these are, they're making six these figures are, these are six wealth figures. management analysts yes. these are not all right your, your local intern so the, getting this you is coffee. this is not the these person like, starting yo, at the bottom of the food chain well fresh they're starting out, out at the bottom in the wealth management sector look I think these look, are people that, that graduated wants, wants, from Harvard you, Business School. I would say this. Time to grind. If there's work to do, do the work. What yeah. I don't like is I've been in environments where the culture is we're there from 8 to 8, and then people sandbag their way through the day not doing work because they think they're going to be there all day. And it's what we, in baseball we used to call eyewash. Eyewash is like when people just sit there doing nothing until they think the coach is watching. Then they start shuffling the papers, and it's like, oh, I'm doing work, 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 mm-hmm. work, work. Look at me working so hard. No, like, look, if you have work to do, do work. Now, I, I, don't, I didn't come in, up in the financial industry. I came up in, in creative. So it was the exact opposite for us. We just, you got paid for a project. Mm-hmm. And the best directors, the best producers that I was on, it was like, hey, if we got the project done. If we got all our shots, get out of here. We're not getting paid by the hour. Like, it's, it's, in that case, it's a raise. You know, we, when you do a commercial and you've got two days and you've got, you know, essentially 20 hours, two, two shoot days, and then if you get done by 16 hours, you got all your shots and you got all, all your pickups and everything like that. You're paying, you're paying your crew extra. So what ends up happening, the same crew comes back multiple times, and they get better and better and better and more efficient at their job because they know if I do my job and I do it well, we're getting out of here. I don't have to be here till midnight tonight. I'm going to get out of here at 8 o'clock. So I've seen it from the other side. If you guys – I haven't been in that p- position, so I, should, I shouldn't have had such a, a strong opinion on that from the beginning. I do apologize for that. But if, if there is 12 hours worth of work to do, do the work. Compete. I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. But if you're just setting an environment Nobody. where this is – this is not the environment where you're sitting around, buddy. Let no, me put this it to this way. This isn't like paper push. Sure, you, you, you're. It's a little bit of a reach, but I get it. Your world, you're in. Your world is not uh, this world. Your world, the world is project based. You go finish the project, you're done. I yeah. get it. That's the optics. That's the part you're in. In this world, if you're gonna sit around the 12 hours at the office and do nothing, you will be fired in 90 days. Less this than is, that. This yeah. is not a job for no. you, bro. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, your first year. If you and this is in, this is an 01 when I got the job 20 years ago. If you didn't bring 10 million dollars your first year in, you're fired. Mm-hmm. If you didn't pass your Series Seven the first time, not second, third time. Morgan Merrill Goldman, you have to pass it the first time. You don't, you're fired, right? 
if you don't pass it the first time, you're fired. If you don't get $10 million your first year, you're fired. There is no time to sit around and shoot the shit and look at Instagram videos all day long and TikTok and Twitter, Twitter videos. You do that, it's over with. You have to go out there and network. You have to go out there and shake hands. You have to go out there in the morning. You have to go out there to the country club. You have to drive the appointments. You have to, you have to do anything and everything it takes to be a winner in this job. So what does that 12 hours look like? What is that 12 hours? It's nonstop. You're either prospecting. You're either looking for clients. You're either networking. You have to be around Or you're people. analyzing. You're doing, you're doing data analytics. You're, you're, you're learning exactly. about what's going on. You're studying everything in the market, what's going on. You're studying the papers. You're trying to see what this analyst is saying, what that mm -hmm. analyst is saying, what just, what's an official buy, what's a hold, what's a sell, what just changed categories, mm -hmm. who got a better rating, whose quarterly calls coming up. Let me see what this guy's going to be doing. But most of this job, is shaking hands being in front of people. Are you actually managing the wealth? My understanding was that there were programs, like there's a Goldman fund that you go into and they and you you get into this and you get it like so what why would i go with for example okay why would i go with you know uh jp morgan instead of western mutual why yeah, why would you, i go you're, you're gonna you, you you everybody here brags that they have the best money manager they have the best fund they have the best whatever so you're putting you're gambling where you're putting your money with goldman's gonna say we're the best because you are able to participate in certain things that others are not like goldman mm -hmm. says to, to get into Goldman, to have an account with them to manage your money, it's $10 million. Yeah, I was going to say. It's you ain't got $10 million? Like You can't bucks, be. Yeah. This is Goldman doesn't let you get in with less than $10 They're not million. doing the $10,000 buy-in. That's there, Bank of whatever. America. You're saying Goldman, ones, dog. Goldman is going to be the $10 million client. But if you're with Goldman, here's yeah. what happens with Goldman. You want an IPO to participate in Uber before anybody else is done? Yeah, you can go in. How much you want to put in? Half a million? Great. You can go in because you're part of the Goldman family. Those types of opportunities comes to you. But you know how many total advisors Goldman's ha Goldman has? How many do you think Goldman has? No idea. Maybe okay. under 500. Ma uh, 400. Go 400. That's it? That is all. Goldman's, Goldman the Sachs. Elite. In the United elite. States or worldwide? In, in U.S. Goldman Sachs' office in Dallas is half the size of this office. Ten a state? They, they have 10 well, analysts? Oh, they, ten? they have 400 financial advisors is what they have. That is it. To get a job there, with there, Goldman, there's probably a lot like, more in California, New you York, Florida versus Idaho. You have to Florida be the cream Idaho. of the crop. Yeah. You have to be the cream of the crop. Now, if you make it at Goldman five years later, minimum mm -hmm. seven figure earner. If you're there ten years and you're a killer, you can make five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You can make money if you're at a place like that. But is it easy to make it and stay no. there? Absolutely not. So, again, if you want to, you know, we we uh, we we look at sports and you're like, hey, to get to the next level, it takes a lot. Okay, four questions. Mm -hmm. Are you clear on what you want to do with your life, your dreams, your goals? Number one, most people are not. I asked this question last week in Dallas. How many of you are clear? Everybody's hands went up. I said, great. I'm going to ask the question one more time. How many of you guys are so clear about your dreams and goals that if I bring you up on stage, you can recite it to everybody in 20 seconds? This is what happened. Hmm. A thousand people in the room, 50 hands are up. It was 800 hands up when I asked it openly. Then when there was a commitment to you coming and presenting it to everybody else, their hands went up. I said, okay, great. So most of you guys don't even know what your dreams and goals are. I know what it, what it is to be there. I've been there before as well. Number two, let's just say you know what your dreams and goals are. Mm -hmm. Do you know how demanding that dream or goal is to become a reality? So a person says what? Yes or what? No, I don't know how right. demanding like, it is. I want to do this, like, but I don't know how long it's going to take. don't know how yeah, demanding it is. Oh, yeah, I want to make a million a year. Do you really know what it takes? Like we you talked mean, about, nobody yeah. takes these jobs not knowing yeah. how much work they're okay. going to work. Yeah, you know how demanding it is to yeah. be that person. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. the, the greatest of the greatest comedians that I read about and I go see what they did, they freaking had no life for five, ten years. Yeah. They went out. It's like maniacal. It's not the best life. The people who went and played in the military and guys made it to the top, dude, they were doing correspondence afterwards. I wasn't doing correspondence afterwards. Matter of fact, I can tell you this, two and a half years in the military, I've never taken one correspondence class. My buddy took correspondence classes. He retired as a Delta Force. I got out as an E-4. I was not taking military seriously, so I didn't have like a, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to go take correspondence. So let me go back at it. How clear are you about your dreams and goals? Number one. Number two, how demanding is that dream? Like if it's to win an Emmy, if it's to win an Oscar, how demanding is that? Number three is the tough question that everybody secretly answers that nobody knows. You know what the question is? Are you willing to meet the demand required to have your dreams and goals and vision become a reality? And most, the answer is what? Secretly, they say what? I'm just not willing to do it. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather go home and party. And the last one is the following, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Mm. The last one is when you sit there and you close your eyes, 
and you dream about whatever your vision is, whatever your dream is to become a reality, you're by yourself when you think about it, does it get you emotional? Does it get you fired up? Mm-hmm. Does it get you to say, oh my gosh, like you, you get the chills all over your body. If it doesn't, it's not really that big of a dream. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.